Welcome on into the Wolverine TV. Clayton Safey here with Chris Ballas. We're presented by Lewis Jewelers, our great sponsor. So thank you to them for uh, helping make this possible. We are going to dive into a mailbag here. Got uh, tons of questions from Michigan fans over on our message board at thewolverine.com. If you're not with us over there already, head to thewolverine.com. Promo code BLUE60 gets you two months uh, of our premium content absolutely free. So some good questions uh, that we will get to in just a second. Before that, uh, we will start with the G League Elite Camp over the weekend. So Michigan had four guys there, the two most notable being Devontae Jones, the Coastal Carolina transfer commit who's coming in here uh, to Michigan if he does not go to the NBA. Also Hunter Dickinson, the uh, reigning All-American and uh, Big Ten player of the – or Big Ten freshman of the year, excuse me. Uh, and then Sean D. Brown and Mike Smith, they're pursuing their dreams. They're all in on going the pro route. But, uh, Chris, you were watching – the, the full scrimmage there the other day and then got to talk to all four of those guys afterwards. I saw the fourth quarter uh, and some good stuff from Devontae Jones there coming back, leading his team back for a win. Um, but you saw the whole thing. I guess what were some of your takeaways? And then it's also important to note that none of them did receive that invite uh, to the NBA Combine, which is going on now. So uh, obviously that uh, is huge as well. Big news there. That's pretty big in, in that, you know, it's the, what, 70 or 80 guys now. And if you look at the, the two rounds of the NBA draft, you're talking about, what, 70, 60-something guys. So um, it, it really appears that Hunter Dickinson will be back based on that, uh, that Devontae Jones will be coming to Michigan based on that. I don't think either one of these guys is going to get drafted, and I think they can use another year in college. Uh, I really like Devontae Jones' game. Uh, it doesn't look like as much of a point guard as I thought he would, to be honest with you. I thought he was looked more two guard, even though he didn't shoot the ball as much. What he does is uses his strength to get to the hole, and that's what he did against Mike Smith. Uh, has an interesting little pull-up jumper off of one foot, man, from the free throw line that I like. It's unique, um, but really shows a, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's a heady guy. He's a guy, high IQ guy, and he can play on or off the ball. Uh, he's a great addition, in my opinion, and he will be. I think that he's going to be here next year. He scored five points in the second game. The first game, he scored 15, and again, got to the rim, had a real nice backdoor cut on a pass from Shawnee Brown. Uh, Shawnee Brown and Hunter Dickinson were exactly what they were at Michigan. It was funny. Uh, uh, Shawnee Brown brought the energy off the bench, hit some shots. Uh, he had a really nice take but, and finish between two guys. He had about three or four assists, and that was something that we hadn't seen as much from him. But he was really impressive uh, in that respect as well. Played great defense, was uh, diving for the ball. I think there is a role for him. You know, maybe one of those guys that goes between G League or, or finds his niche in the in the NBA at some point. Um, but love his game and just love the kid, man. Just a great kid, and I think he's gonna he's gonna do well no matter what he does. Mike Smith had a really tough day on the first day, uh, again going against Devontae Jones, but he had a really nice second day and was one of the top five actually players. I think he scored 18 points or something like that, three of three from three-point range. Might have been 14 points, but he had a handful of assists too. Uh, he said that he's either going to go G League or Europe. He said, I'm not ready. He's got a ton of offers, man, in the private sector. This is a smart kid, degrees from Columbia and Michigan. He says he's going to own a business someday. But, um, you know, he's small, and that's what everybody brought up about his height, you know, and he said, hey, it doesn't mean I'm not going to play professionally, and he says he is, and whether that's overseas or G League to start and then maybe earn his way to, you know, a cup of coffee or more in the NBA remains to be seen. But uh, love those guys. And then Hunter Dickinson, man, same thing. Missed every every outside shot he took. for the uh, Missed his uh, only four. I think he took four three-pointers, missed them all. Uh, didn't show much of a right hand. Uh, did show a good left hand again and the ability to finish. You know, in the Big Ten, people are going to be able to scout that out. But had a handful of rebounds, had a couple blocked shots, had one or two block, uh, shots blocked, and had, you know, four turnovers and then I think three turnovers. So uh, I think he could use another year, uh, work on that right hand, work on that jump shot, and definitely expect that Dickinson and Jones will both be back in Ann Arbor. Yeah, and Hunter did hit a an elbow jumper in game two, uh, okay. I believe, on Monday. So that's something, too. It start there, I guess. You know, we all talk yep. about the three ball because it's obviously important to stretch the floor. But, you know, there were times last year when he could have pulled up from the elbow, and he tried to a couple times, but uh, to make those jumpers. It's funny, Some uh, he was asked, you know, if he hit a three last year or attempted one, and he was like, 
yeah, I attempted three or whatever, and he obviously didn't make any. But I think we're going to see that number go up this year at Michigan, uh, assuming that he does come back at this point now. But good experience for him. We said on last week's show that it's a win-win-win for him to go down there, compete with some of those guys. Uh, the same thing for Devontae Jones, who was kind of weighing his options anyway when he decided yep. to enter the transfer portal. And then, obviously, Sean D. Brown and Mike Smith to kind of just showcase what they can do. Those guys probably weren't going to be draft picks. Sean D. Brown a little bit closer than Mike Smith, but – uh, to kind of showcase what they can do. And, and as you, you know, you talked about Shondi Brown. It's like every team in the playoffs right now and really every good team in the NFL or in the NBA uh, right now has a really tough guy, whether that's yep. a wing, whether that's like a Patrick Beverly point guard type guy, everyone has that guy. So if he can turn into that guy, which, or, you know, for an NBA team, we know he's a tough player and yep. all that. If he can catch fire, like you said, with a two-way contract in the G League, uh, you know, he starts hitting all his threes and everything like that. You just never know. So, um, you know, he's going to have a shot. And I think he, both those guys are going to play for quite a while, whether that's overseas or in the G League or who knows in the NBA, you know. So. And that's the big thing, with the shot for Shondi Brown, man. He's going to have to step back another step. And, you know, but he was nailing them, uh, you know, and I think he probably did pretty well in the drills. I haven't asked him yet. But, um, man, again, talking to those guys, though, and seeing how much fun they were having, uh, these are guys that are going to be playing basketball for a while somewhere and, and should be. And you're, these are guys you root for. And more than anything, they are guys, when you're talking about Michigan, that really preserved the culture and added to the culture that uh, John Beeline started and Jawan Howard has continued. Uh, these are just great fits. So you wish them all the best. You know, nobody was rooting against Devontae Jones or Hunter Dickinson, but you were thinking, man, you know, it'd really be nice to see these guys in a Michigan uniform because as people were saying on the message boards, man, they're going to have a great opportunity here to uh, to make a Final Four with the talent coming in and the talent uh, projected to come back. Uh, this could be a really, really good basketball team. So uh, rooting for those guys, uh, I think we will see them in Michigan uniforms and then probably maybe for one year for both of these guys, Hunter Dickinson and Devontae Jones, one more year. So, but uh, yeah, I, it was fun to watch them, fun to talk to them. Uh, they're going to be doing good things. Yep. And, uh, you know, when those guys do make their decisions, important to also point out that they have ju till July 7th uh, yep. to make those calls. Um, get them back to Camp Sanderson. Uh, it, well, if it, you're Hunter Dickinson, back to Camp Sanderson. And then if you're Devontae Jones, uh, you know, get him in Camp Sanderson. He's in great shape already, but just get this, yes. these guys with that team because I think that's important as well. You know, they talked about last season how much bonding they were able to do throughout that summer. They came in a little late. But the season started a little late, uh, and those guys were the only guys on campus. They were the only guys they could, you know, they're kind of bubbled up, a soft bubble, and they got to bond. So yep. I think that's big for uh, when those guys do make that call, um, you know, to get right back with their teammates who uh, I think the freshmen are coming in next week officially for good. So uh, yep. it'll be it'll be time for Juwan Howard to build another great culture on another team here. Um, let's get into the mailbag here. We'll just throw some questions out. We'll, uh, you know, there's no dumb questions, even though some – might be, but we'll just be nice. And then uh, we'll throw some out there. If we have a one-word answer, that's fine. If we have, uh, you know, go on a little tangent, that's fine too. So um, we first question will come from Marty K, a great longtime poster on the fort. He's wondering uh, who will start on the defensive front seven on opening day. Uh, so we've got some household names in there like the Aiden Hutchinsons of the world. Uh, and then obviously some other spots that are up for grabs. I guess what are your uh, what are your quick thoughts? I mean, we had a depth chart on the on the site coming out of spring. Obviously freshmen coming in, but it seems like it'll probably be out of that group that was there, out of early enrollees, and then the rest of the returning guys. And then it'll be yeah, it'll be also be in the football preview that's mailing next week. So Marty K, great question. This is the big question, man. These guys have to exceed expectations and you're looking at Mozzie Smith you're looking at Aiden Hutchinson look at that picture of Mozzie Smith right there on the right uh, that dude is looking good he is in great shape and that's what he needs to be because they are counting on him and in a 3-4 defense you need your nose tackle to be a stud I think he's got that ability Chris Hinton's a five-star he's got that ability uh, as Doug Skeen our analyst always says just needs to see it on every play Donovan Jeter's going to be up there um, you're looking at Junior Colson and the Kai Hill Green are going to be pushing Josh Ross and Michael Barrett, who kind of faded after the first game last year at the Viper position and isn't really big. Uh, he's going to have to play extremely well in there because he's going to be pushed. Nikai Hill Green, Junior Colson are two guys 
we spoke to a lot of coaches this spring for the football preview. They said these guys are – the trajectory is just – I mean, these guys are on the rise. So um, going to be exciting to watch that eventually. Uh, and then David Ojabo is probably going to be your other guy initially. Mike Morris, another one right there, is going to be getting a lot of playing time, probably the surprise of the spring. So, uh, But this is where – uh, this is the big question, man. Can they stop the run? And uh, and are these guys going to be strong enough up front in the front seven? And uh, as of right now, you'd say, man, I, you know, it doesn't doesn't look good. But there are, there are talented guys there, and you would trust that they're going to be adding uh, some good weight this summer as well under Ben Herbert, Michigan strength coach. So here's hoping. Yeah, and it's going to be crucial, I think, the front seven because, um, you know, we saw last year just how suspect some of those – corners were you know no offense to them but i mean they struggled out on an island mm-hmm. there part of that was due to no pass rush so you got to rush the passer at the same time you got to stop the run like you said there were a lot of problems last season when you look at the numbers they were they were horrible so they got a lot to fix but like you said there are there is talent there and there are guys that can step up and emerge so it'll be it'll be interesting you know you kind of have guys penciled in right now but fall camp i mean they're gonna have at it and, uh, you know, we'll see what guys, you know, guys like Mike Morris do again after a good spring. And Mozzie Smith now, you know, in better shape. Can he become now a really good just football player uh, now that he's in yep. the right shape? So that'll be interesting to watch um, as well. And the depth uh, the depth on the defensive line, too, it just isn't there. Julius Walskoff's going to have to step up, uh, you know, guys like that. So they're going to be uh, it's, they're going to be tested. they got to stay healthy, and, they, and you need a couple of guys behind them to really step up. Mm-hmm. No question about it. Okay, next question here. Um, tough to uh, say this name, so I will just ask the question. But uh, how much of an impact can the new hires actually have on culture? Uh, I thought that was a good question because, um, you know, they've only been here a few months. Steve Klingskill got in, what, a couple months ago. Uh, not even two at this point, just about two. Um, so they got to, you know, change things fast. They got to turn some things around fast. They also have to recruit. They also have to, you know, try to teach these guys the fundamentals that they're going to be playing with in the new scheme, especially on the defensive side of the ball where there's a new system, new defensive coordinator, four new assistant coaches in total. Um, and then they're trying to fix that culture. And we, we talked about it last season. We would do these shows every week, but, you know, previewing, previewing the next game. And we would talk a little bit about the last game and there were, you know, body language issues there were you know just the fact that the team you know seemed to wilt when they would get down in a hole you look at the Wisconsin game really a couple years in a row now where things don't go right in the beginning of the game and they would just kind of fold and and you can't have that those were you know obviously and then you hear some things behind the scenes going on in the locker room as well with you know just a team not being that tightly bonded group that you need them to be Uh, how much can new coaches help I think they can help a lot Uh, I guess you know I'll, I'll state my opinion first with the guys that they've brought in and it seems to be that, you know, the emphasis is on recruiting, but I think the emphasis is also on culture as well. And I think those kind of go hand in hand a little bit because it's all about relationships. When it, you know, Mike Hart, Ron Bellamy, Steve Klinkscale, you hear how Matt Weiss is really connecting with these kids. Sharon Moore has always been that guy. He gets a promotion now to co offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. So is it going to work? I don't know. Uh, you know, I feel like that they're going to have a good shot to, uh, to, you know, have some good improvement this year, but I think the culture is going to be better. And I think they can make a big impact in only several months heading up to the season. And James Ross, who's now at Hope College, he told us that Mike McDonald's made a huge impact on these kids as well. Uh, they love him. And they, he said that he commands the room, commands their attention. He's really got more of an NFL style, and these kids really respond to him. He, they can call him at any time and, and talk to him whenever they want to. He's really in touch with them. So uh, I like that about him. Uh, with Bellamy, man, and talking to him, I, I said this, I've said this many times. A year ago, I talked to him for a long time when he was still the head coach at West Bloomfield, and I thought, this is a guy that you need to get on staff here, and they've tried over the last several years, they finally did, because he understands the culture, the winning culture, the championship culture. Mike Hart is the same way. These guys won championships at Michigan. They competed for championships just about every year. So uh, they understand what it takes. And uh, Mike Mike Hart is not a player's coach, and I love that about him. He is a no-nonsense guy. Uh, you better come. You better do, do the work that it takes to win for Michigan, which is what Lloyd Carr always demanded. It's amazing. I keep coming back to that. Everybody's like, oh, I can't wait to get rid of Lloyd Carr. And now he said, be careful what you wish for 
man. And, you know, we saw what that what, what that's led to here the last several years. They haven't won a Big Ten championship uh, under anybody but him in the last 20 years. So, um, but I think Jim Harbaugh can do it. I, I think he's made a step in the right direction. We've seen it on the recruiting trail. These kids relate to the Michigan coaches. Uh, I really like what they bring to the table in terms of uh, not just personality, but their ability to to really understand, uh, you know, what it takes to win at a place like Michigan. And I think they're going to do a great job teaching that. And Klingscale, Klingscale is a guy that's been around the state forever and who Bellamy loves. If Ron Bellamy loves the guy, I love the guy. Let's put it that way, because uh, I trust his uh, judgment when it comes to character. Yeah, and it's a good point about some of the former players in the locker room as well. And, you know, people always make the argument, well, we're, they just want to hire Michigan men and go out and get the best guy. Well, in the case of Mike Hart, I mean, he's one of the rising stars in the business, but also Ron Bellamy as well, guys that have been in that locker room and have seen what a championship looks like and what, you know, a non-championship team has looked like, frankly. You know, yes. those were good teams when they were there, but they didn't win a championship every year. Mike Hart won one. Right. He knows what it looks like. And he's going to confront the disconnect. As you said, Mike Hart's not going to be buddy-buddy with you. And um, talking to uh, you know one of the high school coaches on the east side of the state that has sent uh, a guy to play for Mike Hart at each of his stops, Eastern Michigan, Western Michigan, Syracuse, Indiana, and then I, I, I'm you know sure he will at Michigan as well, uh, You know, said that Mike Hart, like you said, isn't a player's coach. He tells these kids he will call their parents and say, your kid's acting up, he's not going to class or whatever and they're better off for it. So those are the types of guys that you have now in that locker room. And not saying that it wasn't similar to that at times for some of these guys that Jim Harbaugh's brought in, but certainly there's steps in the right direction, uh, yep. at least in our opinion, this offseason with some of the moves that he made. Um, same guy here is wondering, is Ballas going to go hungry now that Austin Fox is gone and no longer has anyone to make food bets against? I will say this too. I have made one food bet here. Since joining the Wolverine.com, you know, you got to you gotta be careful. You got to pick your spots. It was against you for the LSU basketball game in the uh, round of 32, and we kind of know how that turned out. I, I was able to come out on the winning end of that bet. But are you – Shawnee Brown saved your bacon, man. He did, but, hey, uh, shout out to Shawnee <laughs> Brown. We already talked about how much we love the guy. So Yeah, uh, I'll tell you what. It looked like that game was going to get away from them early, and he saved their butts, and, uh, and I loved it. You know, not having Isaiah Livers out there. Um, I thought that was the kind of team that could really give him trouble, and they did. Uh, but Michigan came back and uh, and played well. So kudos to you. I'm going to be paying that one off on Thursday, and I am not missing meals, man. Sadly, I'm not doing enough cardio, so uh, I'm going to have to even that out, man. I'm doing too much of the other stuff and not enough cardio. And uh, so, But, yeah, that will be our last hurrah on Thursday night when we take Austin Fox out for dinner. I'm going to pay just so that he feels good knows what it feels like to be on the receiving end rather than the giving end when it comes to when it comes to getting meals and so uh, but we miss him man he was a great teammate and uh yeah i love the kid yep and i'm sure he's watching slash listening right now so uh shout out to our guy austin fox uh is Jawan building a potential monster for years to come i think for me you know i was reading this question earlier potential is the key word there because mm -hmm. things change so quickly in college basketball um you know, exhibit A is the fact that Jawan Howard's here. I mean, it's unfathomable if you would have thought two years ago that uh, he'd not only be here but be doing this well. It, you know, things could happen. And, you could have a recruiting miss or two. You could have a transfer. Uh, yeah, go ahead. What, what do you got? And, and entering year three, I was just going to say real quick, that's yeah. unbelievable. Isn't that crazy? It is Hopefully crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like things happen in an instant. May thirteenth, two 2019, you know, the Woj bomb that uh, John Beeline has left for the Cavaliers. So, um, you never want to say that, you know, it's it's automatic he's building a monster. He's building and continuing to build, you know, what he inherited here, and he's doing a great, great job. Um, but potential is the word for me there. I think that uh, they're going to get to a Final Four. I think he's going to play in a national title game. We know how hard it is to win those. Um, we've seen that in the past. So, um, I, you know, I think he's just going to go from here. And, you know, the, the future is bright, but at the same time, there's no guarantees in this business either. No, exactly. But I do think it's going to be interesting to see. And everybody says, well, what happens when he gets his players? His players look great on paper, right? And the thing is, uh, you know, nobody said that about Jim Harbaugh because they just assumed that, you know, what he did with Brady Hoke's players, he's going to get better, even better players and continue on. Uh, that hasn't been the case. You know, um, the good thing he's doing is that uh, he's still about the same culture, and that's why I have a lot of confidence that this thing's going to continue in the right direction. Every high school coach that I've seen 
uh, that I've talked to that has seen Jawan Howard in action in practice. Uh, that includes Eli Brooks' dad, who was a former high school coach, a great one. James Brooks said the stuff he runs is great. The way they run their practice is great. All the BS about Phil Martelli running everything is just that. It's BS. These guys all work together, though, and that's what they love about Jawan Howard is that uh, a recruit's dad told me, Nate Bradley, uh, Jaden Bradley's dad, he's a five-star who visited not long ago. He said, you know, what kind of a guy – shelves the humility and goes out and gets a guy like Phil Martelli and has that much confidence in himself that, hey, you know, I don't know everything and I'm going to get some help here. Uh, and then relies on guys like Howard Isley and Saudi Washington and gives them all input. At the end of the day, not everything they say is used, but they all have input and, and at different times it is. So uh, I love the staff. I love the kids on this team and the the attitudes when we talk to these guys. Uh, these are first class kids, man. It's different than uh, than in talking to kids at some other schools. There's no question about it. Uh, the way that the culture is, the way that the program is right now, I expect this thing to fully continue on the right path. Uh, he's off to a great start in 2022 recruiting. 2023 recruiting, I'm telling you, man, they're lining up to talk to him. They, I told you a story about how Martelli told me a 23 kid said it would make his year if he could just talk to Juwan Howard on the phone. Now, it doesn't mean he's going to land everybody, but the way he is and the way he's recruiting and how down to earth he is, uh, right now I think he's the hottest name in college basketball when it comes to recruiting, and you can see why, man. The guy's just genuine. Yeah, there's no question. And then also, you know, you mentioned the practices. Uh, I was watching your video with uh, Sean D. Brown um, the other day from the G League Elite Camp, and yeah. I think you said something, you know, about the the practices. You were talking to Devonte Jones, but they were sitting next to each other, and and uh, you asked about the practices. I don't remember the exact context, and Sean D. Brown goes, Whew. "He's yep. like those practice, you know." And and you, we've heard it as well that those practices are very tough. He's very demanding. It's kind of funny. I remember Mike Smith and I wrote an article on this during last basketball season. Mike Smith, you know, someone asked to to describe Jawan Howard's coaching style and he said he's a player's coach. Um, you know, he cares about you and all this and someone said, "Oh, can you expound on that?" and he said, "Well, he cares about you. You know, you have a great relationship with him, but he's demanding. He works us hard. He tells us exactly how it is." It's like, "Well, it's almost a paradox because it's like it's kind of all the things that a, a player's coach is and isn't at the same time. Right. And that's what makes him, I think, such a great coach so far, uh, you know, that he's so well-rounded and can have the relationship with them. But they trust him to say, like, I'm going to tell you when you're screwing up. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's exactly what you need. It's the same thing on the football side with, you know, if if you can get through to these players, they respect if you tell them what they're doing wrong and then they're going to, you know, try to improve. And that's how you build a great culture. So Some of uh, them do. Yeah, some, some do, and the and yeah, and some, some of them are not transfer. never going to. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, and then you hit the transfer portal, and so long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, Doctor Wolverine says we need better looking hosts. That's just a cheap shot. Yeah, um, thank you, Doc. But yeah. <laughs> will Mike Hart be the Michigan head coach one day? He asked, and and I thought about this question as well when I was skimming through these before. My money would be on no because I, I think it's unfair to just say one guy will likely be a head coach at Michigan one day. But if you look up and down the staff, uh, he's certainly a name that's at the top of the list, in my opinion. And I know that you feel similarly on this, uh, that you know he's going to be a candidate one day, whether that's you know whenever, um, but, you know, but someday. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. I think he's that guy. He was associate head coach at Indiana. That's what a lot of people don't realize is how entrenched he was there and how respected he was to get that title and how well thought of he was there. So look at what they built. He was a huge part of that, and their coaching staff would tell you the same. So uh, he was just a big part of everything they did. And uh, the fact that he gets this place, that he's got that Lloyd Carr. Ron Bellamy told me that Lloyd Carr – worked him and and coached him better than anybody ever. And he loved his high school coach. And he said, but he got the most out of me than anybody else could have. And he said, that's why I wanted to go to a place like Michigan where my high school coach was similar to my college coach. And Mike Hart is like Lloyd Carr in that respect. Um, and in terms of uh, working with the media, and thanks, Mike, for for blowing us off at the Wayne State camp. He's just like Lloyd in that respect, too. Two hours we waited there, buddy, while he's sitting there standing, uh, talking to coaches and he's walking, he's like, no interviews. And then he gives that wry grin and he looks back and goes, I'm working here. I'm like, yeah, you're working really hard, you know, scarfing down a hot dog or whatever and talking to these coaches. But I got to tell you, man, I thought about when he was here, I thought this guy is going to come back here someday and he's going to be a great coach. And this is not about, hey, you need a Michigan man to, to coach Michigan, so on and so forth. But in terms of getting that culture back that we were talking about, 
Mike Hart is a guy that understands it as well as anybody. And Lloyd Carr was the guy that spoke, that taught it to him. So uh, I love the idea. I think you're, it's going to happen down the road, I, whether he leaves and comes back or whatever. We don't know what the, the future, what's going to happen with Jim Harbaugh in the next five or 10 years. But I will say this, uh, I would not bet against it. Okay. Yeah. And the, getting no interviewed by Mike Hart. I mean, you know, I respect Mike Hart enough where it's like, I, you know, he's, it wasn't that bad, but yeah, that that uh, little smirk he gave, reminiscent we made of you, uh, Mike. We put his film on when he was in, in 2003. We put his film on the Wolverine.com. We made you. You're the only reason you got an offer here. All right, that's not true, but yeah. uh, <laughs> it was it was fun. Those were the good old days, man. Yep. And that little smirk he gave was a little bit reminiscent. Yep. I feel like of that smirk he's given up at the podium yes. there on at his yes. press conferences. He used to love talking to the media after yep. big wins, at least, right? So, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> um. Next question. This is still from Dr. Wolverine, who, again, I'm still offended by the cheap shot he took. Yeah, who will go on to somebody else. To hell with him. Go to, go to somebody else. Well, we another... got a good one real quick, but right. uh, who will start at quarterback, Kate or the transfer? And I don't think those are the only two options, right? They aren't. In fact, it'll be it'll be Cade McNamara, and I think right now JJ McCarthy's number two. And if JJ McCarthy has a great summer, uh, you know we're gonna have more on this and inside the Ford on Friday on the on the quarterback position. So I don't want to give everything away, but uh, really like that battle. I think Alan Bowman will contend. Uh, he's here now, so we'll let you know on Friday and inside the Ford what's going on there with that battle. Right now, I fully expect Cade McNamara to start. Uh, whether he's the guy in the middle of the year, that's a different question. It's a little tease, as we call it in the it business. It is a big tease. Yeah, absolutely. A big tease. Yeah. Uh, DF Bloom is saying he'd like to see some staff picks in the uniforms, much like the recruits are. I assume he means our staff. Um, I don't think they're really letting us anywhere near that building right now. Um, <laughs> let's what? see. The, 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 like what they're going to wear? Yeah, the you know how the recruits put on the uniform or whatever. I don't think they're yeah. going to let it. They would let us do that. Uh, maybe, oh, the must, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe the coaches. Maybe the coaches. uh can't Let's imagine. see. Next question. <laughs> yep. AR16 uh, wonders who the top five players on offense and defense that absolutely need to step up are. Um, mm. You know, there's names out there. Who needs to step up? I think, you know, the interior offensive linemen, uh, some of the, you know, third-year guys now, Trevor Keegan, Nolan Rumler, if they can do that uh, and solidify one of those guard spots or Carson Barnhart moves down to guard, you can move Zach Zinter over to center. I think that's huge, and we've – Kind of talked about that as well, but we talked about Mike Morris. Um, you know, someone's just got to come out of nowhere. You know, DJ Turner on the back end as well. There's a lot of names here that, uh, you know, maybe those are the guys that are going to make or break Michigan season. Do they have enough guys to, um, you yeah. talked about depth earlier as well on the defensive line, to have depth, you know, to have enough talent there uh, and not just roll out with some of the same guys as last year. I think it's important that guys improved and, uh, you know, come out of nowhere uh, in any given uh, season. Andrew Vistardis needs to play better. They need better production from the center position, in my opinion. Solid's not good enough or, or just okay is not good enough there. Uh, I'm still thinking that Zach Zinter, you know, might come out of nowhere and win that job. You never know. And if Nolan Rummer were to step up because he had a great spring game. I really like that, the idea of Keegan, Zinter, and Rumler. I, I think those guys are road graders in there and nasty guys, uh, those three together. Barnhart and Hayes battling for the left tackle job. I really like Barnhart. I think Hayes is going to be okay. Still needs to add some weight. Uh, and then Andrew Stuber is obviously a, a rock on that right side. He's a solid plus there. So uh, I like that. Uh, one of the receivers has to step up. We keep hearing about Mike Sainristel every year. He was one of the guys that Jim Harbaugh singled out as having a great camp, uh, but he needs to be better. They need more production. It's it's nice that you can you know block and so on and so forth, but he needs to be able to catch catch passes and get open. And if it's not him, then it may be an A.J. Henning or a Roman Wilson. One of those guys needs to step up. The running backs, uh, Love Haskins, Blake Corum needs to have a big breakout year, in my opinion. Donovan Edwards will play, but I think Blake Corum can really be a factor in this offense, either in the passing game or as a back, if he's more patient, waiting for those holes to open. So... Uh, defensively, it's got to be a linebacker. You got to have one of those inside guys. Josh Ross, A, has to have a much better year than he did last year. He had a high ankle sprain the year before, his brother told us, and he never really recovered from that. 
Uh, he had a really nice spring game from what we understand, but they need another linebacker or two to step up. Aiden Hutchinson's got to play his best football. And then obviously the defensive line, two of those guys, Mozzie Smith and Chris Hinton have got to have really big years if they're going to stop the run. So uh, you mentioned DJ Turner. I like him. I think he's going to push for a starting job, not just playing time. Vince Gray obviously has to be good and Jamon Green, but safeties are really strong. So there's talent here, Clay. You know, it's just a matter of putting it together. Yeah, and you named just about – just about everybody, and they need to step yeah. up. I mean, right? It, it was a disastrous season. Uh, everyone yeah. needs to step up, even the players that are quote unquote solidified. Um, so you know, it'll it'll be interesting to see, I guess, who uh, you know who does that, and, and exactly how solid they are, um, especially on defense. I think in that front seven, but we already talked about that. Yep. Um, hail to your victor! A more? What's that? A couple more here. Yep. Yep. All right. Let's do it. Uh, hail to your victors. Wondering, do you think the minimum length of Howard's tenure here is when Jason Jett are through the program? I I think so. Yeah, without a doubt. I think he's going to coach, uh, and who knows how long Jet will be here. Jace will be here for four years, and you know maybe Jet will be here too. He's not getting here till next year, but yes, he's coming. Uh, you heard it here <laughs> first. I guess everybody's probably saying the same thing. But and I know he wants to be recruited, and you don't want to steal his thunder. But come on, guys. You know this was pretty obvious here. Um, but yes, I do think that. So you're looking at 2025, maybe. So you better lock him up. You know, if if he has the kind of success that we think he's going to have. Uh, then you need to lock him up because NBA teams are not going to stop coming after him. Right now he loves it here, but, you know, the guys like different challenges. And the NBA, if the Miami Heat job were to open someday, for example, still got a house down there, that would be one that I'd be like, okay, that one seems like a no-brainer. So, uh, But you know what? You can't really think about it like that. You've got to appreciate what you've got. You look at John Beeline, they got 12 years out of him. You hope you get that out of Juwan Howard. If not more, maybe he's a lifer. You know, you just don't know. Look at Tom Izzo. He flirted with the NBA, but never left left Michigan State. So, but yes, that is the minimum. Uh, that's a long-winded answer, and we hope it's a lot longer than that. If you're a you know Michigan alum who's also in real estate now, just hit up. You know, they're probably already thinking of hitting up Jawan Howard and trying to sell that Miami house and just uh, right. you know have him right. only have a maybe get him a place up north or something here in Michigan and and keep him here for uh, for quite a while. And that also leads into this next question. Over under four and a half current college coaches you would trade Jawan Howard for? <laughs> I mean, it's a tough question. Um, at Michigan, there's not many I would trade him for, especially with the way the landscape's going, where some of these guys are getting burnt out. Roy Williams, Coach K, they're all leaving the sport. Jawan Howard is just getting going, and he understands the landscape, the transfer portal, uh, that you got to recruit at a high level. He's doing it all uh, while running a clean program. Um, so at Michigan, he's he's the perfect fit. You know, the names out there would be, you know, a possible Mark Few, a possible Jay Wright or something like that. But right now, I, I don't think Michigan fans are, uh, you know, there's And they're really... not going anywhere. Yeah. Bennett isn't going anywhere. Right. You know, so but theoretically, the yeah. Right. And uh, and frankly, the way that he, he's going right now and the way he's recruiting and how he's doing it, how quickly he learned on the recruiting trail. I remember when he was making a couple mistakes saying recruits names at pressers and stuff like that. Yep. He was worried. He didn't need to have worried, man. He picked it up so quickly. And uh, I, I was one of the skeptics, and I'm the first one to admit it, because that doesn't always work. When you go NBA guy with no experience coming back to the alma mater, uh, guys like Mike Francesa were calling it a terrible hire. They didn't have to go that route, so on and so forth. And I said on a national show, you know, it's a risk, you know. But uh, at the same time, high risk, high reward. Sometimes it works. Juwan Howard, sometimes it doesn't. Rich Rodriguez, right? So um, I think I, I, you couldn't ask for anything better right now. Uh, there's a buzz around Michigan basketball to the point that we put up a poll at the Wolverine.com. Are you looking more forward to basketball or football season? Two to one basketball at a football school like Michigan. That's crazy. Would you vote? I voted basketball, man. I got to be honest. I voted football you? because it's it's coming up closer, you know, so it's like okay. currently right now, what am I more looking forward to? That's I mean, it's kind yeah. of a – Kind of a cop out because I'm just looking at it the is. calendar basically, but I'm thinking more about right. football right now. Yeah, um, yeah you know what? Ask me after those first two games if Michigan, you know, beats Washington. Then hey, uh, you know, I'm excited. Right. Then you wouldn't be trading, you know, the next game for exactly. uh, whoever for they play basketball. game one, Appalachian State right. or something like that. So, uh, in basketball, by the way, uh, let's go with the last question here. Um, Mike Tim Rob 
three guys asking one question. Will the football offense be in the top third, middle third, or bottom third of the Big Ten? I thought this was a good one, and I started kind of thinking of some of the teams in the Big Ten, uh, what they have coming back offensively. I'm going to say that middle third with a potential to be fourth, the last spot of the top third. But when you look at you, you know Ohio State's going to be up there. You assume Indiana with Michael Penix and all those guys, Ty Fry, Fogel, and Peyton Hendershot coming back will be up there. Um, you assume Wisconsin and Penn State have a good chance, have probably enough to be up there, especially Penn State, I think, on offense um, with some of the weapons that they have. Uh, so Michigan, four through seven, I think is, yep. is you know, but those are good offenses. When you If you're four or five, you're still a good offense. That's good enough, I think. Uh, to also then have a good defense and win a lot of games. It's got to be, you know, a complete team that is, uh, you know, a, com- a complete good team to be good, um, you know, if you're not elite at one thing or the other. But I think there's enough there to be four through seven. You hope it's closer to four. Yeah, I agree 100%. That's exactly where I'd put them and say it better be there. This is a big year for Josh Gaddis. These guys need to improve. They need to be consistent. Uh, the turnovers – you know, are ridiculous, the three and outs, everything else the last few years. And uh, we've seen flashes of good offense. But, man, even when uh, – when um, even a couple of years ago when they played well down the stretch, they were turning the ball over too much. And you just can't have that, man. You can't have the fumbled snaps. You can't have the ball on the ground. Um, you got to make plays. So this is a place, uh, in my opinion, this is – everybody talks about the front seven on defense, but – I'm very anxious to see how much different the offense looks, all the speed and space talk. I don't want to hear it anymore, man. I want to see something. You know, I want to see it out there. Uh, Michigan doesn't have elite speed. I'm sorry, you know, to to get these guys, you know, the ball in space and have them make moves and go. We've seen it for a few years now. So they're going to have to scheme themselves to some wins, and I think uh, they're probably going to be in that four and seven range, no question. Yep. So there you have it. Apologies to everybody that we didn't get to. We appreciate all the questions. There were some really good ones in there. Again, some some bad ones, but you know, there's, there's no bad questions. Uh, join us at thewolverine.com. We'll do uh, we'll do another one of these in a few weeks or something like that. Heading into fall camp uh, or Big Ten Media Day is going to be crazy. Uh, it's going to really one uh, month, baby. I know. One month day. We'll be down in Indy that for that full coverage. Join us at thewolverine.com. Blue 60 is the promo code for two months of our premium content. Absolutely free, and we'll see everyone next time.